Hey folks, I'm Ian Baker and today we're going to go over your all new Forest River Sabre. Congratulations on your purchase. It is a wonderful fifth wheel. I'm going to go over some of the basics, show you some of the basic operations so you can get out there camping and starting to have a great time. Right up front, of course, is the front cap. You will see that you have some lights on there. Those will be controlled by this switch right here, which is labeled docking lights. Nice and appropriate for it. You'll also see your auto level control right here. And again, this is pretty simple to use. You push a button, it levels itself out, which is great. You also have controls for the front jack, so you can raise and lower the front end of the uh, fifth wheel here. You'll also see hitch height. This one, part of this auto level system is a smart hitch. So you can actually program it to where you drop it off at. So you can push that button and it will move back. So you can just back up, hook up and go. It does make life a lot simple. Then of course, the last button on there will be to retract all of the jacks when you're taking off. If we take a look inside, this will not be here. This is mine because I don't have uh, shore power and I wanted to make sure we had some power. So using this guy to give it 12 volt. You of course will have one battery, possibly two here if you so choose. You will see your 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter there as well as your solar charge controller. So if you need to take a look and see the amount of uh, power you're bringing in, that's what that'll do for you. Then right next to that is the battery disconnect. This does kill all power to the uh, the RV. So when you turn that, you won't get any 12 volt power. It will stop the, I shouldn't say that you don't get any power, but it stops all the 12 volt from coming from your batteries, right? So you don't get that drain on your battery. So if you're done camping for the season, something like that, you want to make sure you turn that off. So you, again, you don't have uh, that drain on there. Spare tires located in there. Hopefully you never have to get to that, but if you do, you know exactly where it is. It's in a nice, safe location, and that will help, of course, protect it from the elements. Coming around to the side, the Sabre is equipped with two 20-pound propane tanks. You'll have one on this side. The other one will be on the other side. Great thing about these is if you do need to swap them out, if it's a, a Sunday and you know you can't find a place to fill, a lot of times you can go to like a gas station or something and swap those out for another tank if uh, you have to, if you're in a pinch. Making our way into the storage. Now this of course will be different size, a little bit different look depending on the floor plan. But uh, you, you will generally have these features right here, one of which will be a switch for a light. You'll have an LED light strip so you have light in here. You will also see your TV hookup and electrical outlet. And a lot of times you'll get something like this. So if you want, you can run those cables right down through here and outside the uh, fifth wheel. So that way you can shut all your baggage doors, uh, your compartment doors here, garage doors, whatever you want to call it. Have a table set up, put your TV right on there and be good to go. If yours has an outside kitchen, it may look something like this. Again, depending on floor plan, it definitely can vary. Uh, the sink on, this, on most of the Sabre floor plans is plumbed into the gray tank, which is super convenient, so you don't have to dump anything out. Uh, the refrigerator here will, be, uh, will run off 120, and that outlet will be GFCI protected, seeing as how it is close to water. So if your fridge stops working, uh, you'll want to check that GFCI circuit. A lot of times that will be inside. Again, it does depend on your specific floor plan. If you have the outside kitchen, you'll probably have a propane quick connect too. It should have a sticker showing you where that is. There is a little valve on that quick connect, so you can just open that up to get the propane flowing. And again, the propane still won't flow until you plug something in there. Somewhere on your saber, you should also have a leash latch. So if you have a pet, it gives you a convenient place uh, in which you can uh, leash them up to. Your step system is... Uh, at this current time is the more ride step above step system. Yours may have something slightly different, but it should work very similar. It's a nice secure step system and the way it essentially works is it folds right up into the door jam and should lock right into place. Now you'll see this specific one has a lever right here. So in order to deploy the steps, I have a handle, have the lever. You're just going to pull that. That will allow this to drop down. And then I will have these, see if I can show you, these right here to make it nice and easy to adjust the feet. Uh, th this is a, a newer iteration. It used to be where you had pins, you had to pop out in place. This makes it way easier to adjust. So if you have one of the newer steps, be thankful. Uh, again, I, I love what they have done with uh, this iteration here. Right up above me is the power awning. Um, this one is the uh, LCI Edge 12 volt power awning. You can see you have lights built into the side rails there. Nice thing about that is it doesn't matter if it's you know partially extended like it is right now, fully extended or completely retracted, you can still use those lights. 
Those controls will be on the control panel inside. I'll show you that in just a moment. The awning can tilt. Uh, again, depending on the floor plan, you may, you probably will, especially like on this one up front, you'll probably need a ladder to access this, but you have a thumb screw. You can just kind of undo that thumb screw. That will allow you to do something like that where you can adjust the tilt, tighten it back up. Whoop, didn't tighten it up quite enough there, but that will um, allow for water runoff or if you want to drop them both down, will allow for, um, you know, like a, a different pitch as well to the awning so that you're getting more shade again, depending on the time of day. Um, your outside speakers will be controlled by that multimedia center inside. We'll see that unit when we take a look in there. Your Sabre, depending on when it was built, may have the slide topper prep. You'll see this one does, and it has it on all the slides. So if you do want slide toppers, it does make it a little bit easier to install. And then as we come around to the back side, you will see a receiver. This is not for towing, folks. This is, has a 300 pound weight capacity is all, so you cannot tow anything behind it. The purpose is for different accessories. Like if you want a bike rack to put in there, if you want a storage tray, something like that, this will allow you to do it using that, uh, that standard receiver hitch connection. Uh, so that definitely is a big benefit to have. If we take a look up top, you'll also see, depending on your model, it may have prep, may have a backup camera like this one here does. If you do have the camera, you'll have, of course, your separate monitor inside, and that will uh, allow you to see what is behind you as you're backing up. 50 amp detachable power cord. I believe all Sabres use uh, 50. I don't think they have any floor plans currently with a 30. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the nice big 50. Having detachable power cord is nice because in the event it gets damaged, uh, you are able to replace it much easier. As far as termination, again, depending on the floor plan, you may have one, you may have two. Um, you can see right here is our termination. Now, this one's a little bit trickier to get to just because it's underneath the slide, but uh, you will also notice your valves right there. These ones do have insulated valve bodies, which is really nice. It goes up into that underbelly, into that insulation so that um, you know, it'll stay a little bit warmer in the cold climates. And speaking of cold, last thing I wanna to touch on is right here in our wet bay. And if you have to do any kind of winterization, if you're in cold climates, it does have the system in here to make it nice and easy. You'll see both the water heater bypass, so you're not filling up your water heater with antifreeze. Uh, and then you'll see your winterization system here too, so you can flip it to winterize. That way you can pull all the antifreeze through your system using your water pump nice and easily. So that is uh, an awesome system to have here, plus the outside shower, cable inlet, black tank flush, water, uh, your, both your water connections, and again, black tank flush right there. So basically everything you need will be located right out here. Uh, again, depending on your floor plan, you, you know, you'll have a furnace and water heater somewhere on the exterior. Uh, you know, it should have the suburban furnace right here and then water heater. Let's see here, what are they using? Um, Air Excel, so it looks like this one is the SW10DE. So for just for general knowledge, the, the 10 in there means it's 10 gallon. Uh, the DE means that it is both uh, going to be propane as well as electric. And so we should see both of those options on the control panel when we head inside. All right, somewhere as soon as you step inside, um, very nearby, depending, again, depending on the floor plan, you should see something very similar to this, which will be your control panel. Uh, it's kind of a mix and match in between <laughs> using some toggle switches and the one control system here. So I'm gonna kind of go through some of those. Um, tank monitoring panel, you will see that you have a uh, physical panel as far as pushing the buttons, kind of see where everything is at and all of our tanks are empty as they should be. Uh, you also see water pump control right here and water heater. Now you'll see that there's only one control. Uh, the reason for that is when you flip this on, it automatically will use propane. Out actually at the water heater is where the other switch is. Uh, you'll see an on off switch out there and that will determine if you want the uh, electric elements to turn on or off as well. So make sure that you um, you know, know which power source you're drawing from. If you're drawing from both, that is fine, assuming you have both but just know that one control will be in here, the other one will be out on the heater itself. You'll generally see your main lights will have their own toggle switches. Some of your auxiliary lights will be built right here into the one control. So with this, right, uh, right from the home screen, and you can kind of jump around right over here on the left, but from the home screen, you see that you have some quick access options like your awning, your leveling system, uh, a few of your lights, right? Accent, awning, kitchen pendants, and then some of your slides. Uh, if you want to go a little bit more in depth into this, like you can see that 
you know, on this one I have a bed slide and a bunk slide, but this particular floor plan has four slides and it's only giving me two. So if I need to find the rest, what you can do is click right over here on devices and you will see uh, your main options pop up. And so you can kind of see the lines up above, right? You have one awning, one leveling, you'll see three different lights and there I kind of see the lines as four slides. So if I click into slides, there they all are. So bed, bunk, door side slide, and kitchen slide, and I can manually operate all those right here from that control. Um, some different settings on here as well, so if you need to do diagnostics, things like that, of the unit itself. But it is pretty self-explanatory, pretty quick and easy to use, and again, those three lights we saw, you can quickly turn those on and off, or if you, again, if you want the main lights, you have the toggle switches right up above. Right underneath that, you will see thermostat. Um, a lot of the Sabre floor plans will come with two AC units. So one thermostat will be here, that'll be for the main one, the other one will be for the bedroom, and most of the time that is actually in the bedroom itself. You'll see that uh, we have a little voltage meter here to read the volts. If you start to get below 10, uh, a lot of things will just stop working, so bear that in mind. Then you have your inverter control right over to the side, so if you want to uh, turn that off, you can, right? Um, as far as the inverter, a lot of times uh, you'll want to turn that off if, for example, you're storing it and um, you know again you don't want that refrigerator to have the draw or something like that uh, you know you'll want to turn that inverter off so it kicks the refrigerator off of course you can push that uh, button again to turn it right back on uh, also know that first slide outs even if you have uh, 120 power you still need the 12 volt battery hooked up for your slides to go in and out so if you go to open a slide and uh, you know your batteries are dead or you don't have battery, that's a good reason your slides aren't gonna move. So it's another important reason for that meter. Also, when you're opening or closing your slides, you do want as much power as possible. So um, you know, I do recommend having shore power when you're opening or closing them, or if you have a portable generator, turn your generator on before you open and close them, obviously, as long as you're in a well-ventilated space. Um, but just to give it that extra power so your slides move freely the way that they should. Uh, the, the zebra blinds are super simple and easy to use if uh, you, you haven't seen anyone operate them before, if you haven't played with them. I mean, it's literally just weight, just like that. And of course, depending on where you put them, will allow how much uh, light you let in. If you have theater seats, they'll probably look something like this. Um, you, you will have controls right here in the cup holder. You will see lights, which just kind of lights up uh, the ring, and it, I believe it has a light underneath as well. Then you will see a vibrate feature as well as a heat feature. Again, you have to have 120 for these to run. They will not run off your batteries. You will have to have shore power or a generator. For the sofa, you should have a tri-fold sofa in your Sabre. Pretty easy to make that up into a bed. You're just going to remove these cushions like so, and then you'll pull this up and out. You have two legs. You're going to pull these down. They are slightly adjustable. If you need to adjust it, you can see there are other adjustments on here, but generally it's set up pretty good right where you want it. And then you will simply fold the back part down just like that. And that becomes your guest bed, throw sheets on there, blankets, you're good to go. Um, before we get to the entertainment center, the other thing I do want to touch on, on a lot of your outlets, you will see this right here where it says it is a GFCI protected outlet. So if you go to plug something in there, and you have you know 120 you have shore power and nothing is happening a good reason for it is because a gfci may have tripped so you're going to want to go around try to find your gfci outlets you will see i happen to have one right here and so my guess is this is probably the one that protects those ones as well because everything is wired together but a lot of times if you have an outlet that's not working it's because a gfci tripped somewhere um, so that's just a good troubleshooting tip for you Taking a look right at the entertainment center, we touched on this briefly when we were outside, but this right here is your multimedia center. This does operate the speakers outside. It is Bluetooth capable. You also see an HDMI input on there. So if you have some kind of auxiliary device, you can plug it right in there and then it will feed into the TV. Um, so that's again, nice feature. So you don't have to hunt on the back of the TV to find anything. Although if you want to, obviously you can. Then fireplace right down below. Uh, once again, this one also requires 120 if uh, you're looking for that to run. So hopefully those are a couple quick tips. Um, oh, one last thing before we go. There is a propane monitor uh, right down here, just so you know. So if, uh, if that starts beeping at you, uh, get out of the camper, you have a propane leak. Um, also, if you hear like a slow beep once in a while, it'll be like a beep. Chances are that is low voltage. So that's another one of those. If you hear that, check your battery and see if they have died down. But 
Uh, that's kind of all I can think of for quick tips to get you out there, get you started in your brand new Sabre fifth wheel. It is a beautiful fifth wheel. Again, congratulations. If you have more questions or looking for some more in-depth information, we do have a large video library available where we do a little bit deeper dives. Of course, you can always go to your local Camping World or give us a call. We'll be happy to help you out because folks, camping is not just about being fun, it should also be easy.